Guess what? Buttons on your underwear. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> dare I say that I hate that? My mother used to say it. I know, you keep telling me that. We all carry certain sayings along in life that our mothers used to say. Funny thing is, it's my kids who say them now. Yeah, I'm going to have to say that I can't hear you when I think that the mic can't hear you too. Is it not working? No, it's working. You're recording. I am? Yep. Why do you all smile? <laughs> Why am I smiling? Because I'm laughing at you because you get all embarrassed. So, what do you think we ought to do with this series called Wives Tales? I don't know. Oh, wives and tales about their husbands? That's one of them. You know what Michael did last week? So you get to tell stories about me. I do. You know what he did last week? He decided to torture me by passing the kidney stone. <laughs> the only thing I have to do, my job, is to remind you to talk up, talk to the microphone sometimes, meaning look at the camera, and to ask you questions. So that way it's your story. My tendency is to look at you though, not the camera. That's okay. Next to People will enjoy that too because that's part of what being real is all about. It's not just about talking to you know the third person who happens to be Jesus between us, but also to people that are out there watching because Wise Tales is supposed to be not just talking at someone, but sharing between two people you know, what we agree on and what we don't agree on. Or what you're learning or what I'm learning or what, you know, I'm trying to tell you and you don't understand the word I'm saying. What we agree on and what we don't agree on? There you go. What we agree on? What we don't agree on? I'm See, just kidding. I'm... One of the things that you get to do is you get to share anything you want to because it's not, we're not trying to make a reality TV show or video series. We're trying to show what it's like to be real about your relationship with Jesus, your relationship with me, and what it's like to be a wife. So, Wife Tales isn't just about telling stories about me, although, you know, men like to be told that they're wonderful and that they're marvelous and that they always look good and that they don't sit around on couches like we're doing being couch potatoes, sitting here eating French toast on Thanksgiving, but what I wanted to do was because I record videos and I talk about Jesus so much, I wanted to share with you and them what it's like to be married to someone who likes to talk about Jesus. That if I'm really the way that I am in public on the videos, am I that way with you? And then also ask you questions, you know, like sometimes, you know, just turn the tables and say, well, what do you think about? And see what your perspective is on different things and topics that a lot of times pastors, elders, deacons, teachers, um, even people that record videos take for granted that someone like you may be going to a Bible study or going to a prayer meeting or going to church, that they think that you've gotten the message they prepared when you may have gotten something completely different out of it. And that's what Wise Tales also will be about. Well, when you go to church... Yeah. I think God gives you what um, what it is you need to hear that day. So what you get from church and what you hear may be totally different from what someone else hears. True. So how do you tell the difference between making a mistake about what you heard and being accurate? Making a mistake. Yeah, like, you know, okay, say... 
you thought you heard the pastor say something or, you know, you, you think you heard something and you really didn't like, you know, when husbands and wives, you know, sit around and talk, you know. Oh, and fight. Yeah. You know, or. It's like you always think you told us something and it's like you never told us. That kind of thing. Who's us? Men. Oh, <clears throat> we're talking men and women. Yeah. So, do you think that happens in church sometimes where people will leave a church service and say the pastor said instead of God spoke to them? I think most people would interpret it that way, say that. You so, wouldn't. So do you think that people make mistakes in, <clears throat> in maybe blaming the church and blaming the pastor for something that maybe God is speaking to them about? Sure. Isn't it interesting how that works? Mm -hmm. Now, if <clears throat> people blame the pastor and blame other people for what they thought they heard, I wonder if that applies to husbands and wives. Of course it does. <laughs> So maybe wise tales will be kind of fun about turning the tables on each other in learning a spiritual truth, but also applying it personally to what we're learning. Because I know you think I'm perfect, honey, but, you know, I have to let you down once in a while and let you know that, yes, I do make mistakes. And what you think you heard might not be what I said. <laughs> so... What do you think, honey? Do you think wise tale is a good idea for people out there, you know, to watch and to learn something from? Sure. It'd be great. People find out they're just like you and us, and just because you have uh, videos and writings all over your blogs and Facebook that you are a normal human being, too. I am? Really? Well, almost days. <laughs> I You're think, different, I'll tell you that. Well, that's what I'm hoping that maybe you'll begin to open up in Wise Tales is to take the opportunity to get off your chest, so to speak, <laughs> things that might be bugging you, that maybe if you share it in front of other people, it's almost like a therapy session, you know, sometimes how people talk in therapy when they have another person there, a third party, you know, to intervene. You know, maybe if you treat the camera that way, you'll think, man, this is my chance to really, you know, get him or say something or, you know, wring his neck or, you know, maybe even just express something that do you're you, feeling. Do you think we could do something, though? Do you think you could talk without using your hands? No. I could talk without wiggling my feet. <laughs> see, I already know that whether you know this or not, she you can't really see it too often. Maybe you will with the camera more often, but she has a tendency of manipulating her feet constantly while she's talking about anything. And she doesn't know where she was going. <laughs> In fact, he has a complete video of my toes. <laughs> well, some people talk with their feet. Some people talk, talk with, with their, their hands. hands. See, we make a perfect couple, don't we? Yeah. <laughs> so, do you think that this would bother you if I set up a camera like this and, you know, invite people to come in and share at awkward moments, even when you're eating, you know, on the couch, you know, and not dressed up and make up up, you know, in order to look good? Oh, heck yeah. So you're not embarrassed to share that with people, the reality? I'm totally embarrassed. This is totally uncomfortable for me. Good. <laughs> We're getting honesty. See, that's what I want from you, is that I want you to share how you feel. Because it's not about being right or wrong on wise tales. It's about what you feel. Because somebody else out there is going to feel the same way. And if you could share from a woman's perspective what it feels like to be married to somebody like me, oh, God help us. But if you could share what a woman feels like, you know, then I think that Jesus can use what we have between us, because Jesus said we're two or more gathered there even in this, he can use our banter and our feelings to communicate to someone out there what they're going through, maybe in their relationship or in their learning about Jesus. 
you know, and so I know I just lost you. You're like glazed over. And it's like, I'm okay. watching the hand fire. Do the other one. <laughs> See, that's what's interesting is that it's always, it's always fun, you know, because then you can go ahead and, you know, be who you really are. <laughs> but, you know, but in all seriousness, I think that, you know, there's a need not for reality television, because that's so dumb, because reality television that you see on TV, even when they put cameras up and, like, you know, Eight is Enough or whatever it was, that program out that they had on TV, I think those are contrived by producers and they cut and paste. But with this, I want to be honest, and I want you to be honest, and I want you to be in control of it. You know, sure, I'm going to set you up and drag you to a couch, you know, make you sit down or do whatever you normally do, but... Kicking and spraying yeah, but that's what we normally do in life anyways, you know. Camera, so, panic city. But I think the more that we do it, you will grow, I'll grow, people out there will grow in their appreciation of what they have, knowledge of what God is doing in their lives, and maybe a chance to open up doors that they haven't tried with their own wives or their own relationships or their own children even. Like, you know, even now, you know, you know that this video will be out there. So you have the opportunity to say things to your children you may not have ever thought of saying or say things to my family or share things with me that you might not have thought of before. And I know most of the time I'll do most of the talking. <laughs> no, but... No, I'll provoke you into talking. You know, I can get you to, into talking about things that you care about. You know, recipes. <laughs> no. <laughs> Just kidding. No. So do you see how this could be fun? No. Oh, you do too, don't you? No. You were already in front of people, cameras, no, that's not fun. So do you talk in front of people in Bible studies? No. Do you get up and share your testimony in front of people? No. See, I want everyone to know why she's perfect for wise tales, because she doesn't like to do any of those things most people take for granted, whether it be public speaking, public prayer, public testimonies, witnessing. These are all fun topics that we and her and I are going to explore with you, because I'm sure that there's people out there that don't like to be a witness. Like, they would rather just not say anything than say something because they're terrified to. I know my sister, Chickadee, what did she tell you? Lots of stuff. We girl gab. So what's girl gab about? Family and kids. That's what we talk about. Do you ever bring up Jesus? Occasionally. See? But that's during Girl Gab, huh? Yep. Do you think that we guys... Talk about, we talk about the library. She has a Christian bookstore uh, library. Library, not bookstore. I was going to say, does she Everything sell is, things? <laughs> no, she doesn't sell things. It's all free. Where does she get the books from? She goes to yard sale and people give them to her when they clean out their houses. Occasionally, she will um, buy something she finds online if she feels that it's a good book to have in the library. But she buys it with funds that have been donated by people to her. And it's a really small, small room, probably about the size of uh, somebody's kitchen or something, and she just has it. Well, but how many books do you think are in there? Oh, thousands and thousands and thousands. She so, always, it might not be as small as a kitchen. Well, a person's kitchen in their house with the kitchen and the dining room put together, probably. Okay. So, where's it located? In Klamath Falls, Oregon. Like, in regards to the city, where is it at? It's right directly downtown. And it's just this small space in between to other businesses. Is it church sponsored? Nope, it is just chick running it, but it was first started by you. <laughs> Who, me? And you turned it over to your sister and your mother. What originally was, was a Firefighters for Christ ministry that back in the Jesus movement, 
Firefighters for Christ was one of the earliest recording ministries that independent guy got together and decided to start recording all these different Bible studies that were going on in the community. And as he did, he put them on tape, cassettes, and passed them around free. And it was one of the earliest and still is one of the most prolific ministries that goes on about passing out things free based upon the idea that freely receive, freely give. So one of the early libraries that started up expanded outward across the country and I took one of them and brought it to Klamath Falls and then my mother ran it for a while while she was alive and then my mother turned it over to my sister before she died. So what do you think about that? So the library my, or the story? The library. The library, I think it's great. She's down there probably about four days a week, all day long. And some days she'll get nobody down there, and then other days she'll have six or eight people that will come in, so every day is different. Does she witness to people, or does she just... What does she do? I don't know. I'm not there with her. Oh, okay. She doesn't tell people anything. She lets them pick out the tapes and books. Yeah, sometimes they'll ask her, they'll give her a subject or something. You know, I want a book on this, and so she'll tell them what what she has. In other words, she's not there to witness to people and tell them what church to go to or... No. Or make them feel uncomfortable. No. And they can check out as many books as they want. They can take one or they can take 30. Does it cost anything? It doesn't cost anything. And occasionally, sometimes the books do not return to her. <laughs> Especially when pastors check them out. Mm -hmm. So do you see how this could be fun? Um, no. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Not my cup of tea. Makes so what would, you like, what would you like to say to, right now, while I'm making you feel uncomfortable. Looking at this as being just an introduction to Wise Tales, knowing that it can go any direction, that we could change it, that it's a lot based on both of us sharing and deciding with Jesus what direction to go to. Do you think you'd like to do this? Right now, today, at this point in time? No. But you know what I mean. I mean, do you you understand the question I'm asking? Because I'm asking it more for you to share with them that, you know, this is something that you think is important to get out, even though you don't feel comfortable about it, right? I guess so. In other words, I, I guess, you know, I'm trying to say it. How do you say it in a third party when you're interviewing someone? Do you think God wants you to do this? I don't know. Have you prayed about it? No, I have not. So why are we doing this? Because Michael said. <laughs> so it was just a demo in order to test the waters, right? Yep. So are you going to pray about it? Sure. Well, cool. By myself, not in front of people, <laughs> in my own private time. In the meantime, would you like me to pray so that, you know, I could commit this to prayer? Sure. Because, why? Because you don't like to pray in front of people, do you? I don't do you? pray in front of people. Right, so praise the Lord. Do you think that this could be, well, anyways, <laughs> do I think this could be? One of the things that I want, I want to do in Wise Tales is to use it also as an opportunity for my wife Lori, you know, to grow in her relationship with God, to be able to trust. What is that one? What's that one thing that I'm always telling you to do, honey? Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean on unto thine own understanding, and all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. Wow! You got it! <laughs> the only scripture I ever learned. <laughs> the only scripture I told you that you'll never do. All Christians, I don't think, ever do. They just keep working on it for the rest of their life. So, Father, I thank you that you've given us this opportunity to open up our living room and our lives and our relationship, not just to people on the Internet, but to each other in a way that 
is uncomfortable for my wife, Lori, to share where she's coming from and to be real about it, as well as for me to share in my embarrassment at times of what she might say about me or might share about how real we are or how real we're not. Because, Father, I thank you that you're always with us, that you're there with us in the bathroom, you're there with us in the shower, you're there with us in the church, you're there with us everywhere we go and everything we do, because you love us. And because you love us, Father, if this is your will, then we commit it to you, that even testing the waters out and providing this for people to look at and to maybe laugh about, to maybe see if Jesus is in it, to maybe wonder if the Holy Spirit is leading, then, God, I pray that you'll cause those people to be blessed by what we've just done, sharing just who we are and what we are in you. Because, Jesus, it's not important that we become looking like saints and acting like religious icons that stand up in front of thousands of people in cameras and professional lighting settings. But, God, I just want to be able to reach out to people that maybe don't feel comfortable praying in public don't feel like they have a message to share. Don't feel like they have the opportunity to tell stories about their husbands or their wives, that they don't have maybe wrong ideas that are called wives' tales that need to be discussed between a husband and a wife or a man of God and a, a Christian who doesn't know everything and doesn't understand everything but may have the right questions to ask so that we can get to the answers that maybe you, by your Holy Spirit, can inspire people to know what you want them to know, not what someone wants to tell them is true or false, but what you, God, will reveal to them as they learn from you, as they see Jesus in my wife, Lori, and as they see you, Jesus, in me. For Father, I thank you that giving us a camera and time and love for other people, we want to share that with them. So, in Wise Tales, Lord, I pray that it wouldn't be a time of reality television, but that it would be something about a living God that they would walk away with, knowing you, loving you, and serving you in Jesus' name with all that they do. Amen. Amen. So, is that fun? No, I had my eyes shut during the prayer. When he was praying, were his hands moving? <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for doing this demo. You're welcome. This is a demo, and I hope that you were blessed by it. And now we'll do the little close cut. No, kidding. <laughs> but really, this is what we want to do, and it will be more organized as we proceed forward and step forward in the Lord as he leads and as he guides. So I hope you had fun with it as much as my wife did. And now when I turn the camera off, she's liable to kill me. Any last words? Bye-bye.